The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly, so let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Monday, September 12th. And this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. So what is happening on this wonderful Monday? We've got current news from around the world, the Sunday Message Word Study, and of course, 2G Talks with Eddie Kwan from San Francisco. All right, everyone, how are you doing? And how was your weekend? I'm sure you guys were able to enjoy your weekend. Just really rest and receive tons of grace and fire from the Sunday message. Of course, we're going to give glory all throughout this week. And I know it is Monday again, and we can restart another amazing week together with the Lord. Yes, a uh, great message. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, prayer is work. And, uh, you know, we're going to go into that for the last segment. Well, not the last segment, for our word study today. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. I would love to hear your comments, what you think about that too. Um, for me, it's been a week of rest and a week of restoring myself uh, after that. Uh, you know, it's only been a week since that event. And I'm going to be serious with you guys. We have been talking about this nonstop. I know that uh, uh, Sunday services all across America, they're all giving testimonies of what happened during that tournament. The sat like... I didn't, some things I didn't even know about, like the double rainbows and um, a cloud that looks like sun seems faced and just so many different things. And um, for myself, I only have one day left and I'll be heading back to Vancouver tomorrow and, uh, you know, getting back into the regular, ex, you know, regular part of life. I've been over here uh, at uh, a good friend's house and uh, just taking care of baby Oliver, uh, just having fun with him, taking him on for walks and stuff like that too. And it's really, it's really amazing, I think, for myself as someone who doesn't have a child, but I love children. But you get to see a different side of taking care of children when you're living with the family, like for like a week straight. And you're like, oh, this is what happens. This is why they're so tired. This is why they don't go out. <laughs> This is why they go to sleep at 9.30 p.m., right? It's, it's, it's kind of strange for me. I'm like, but for me, it feels like the time is always, um, it feels like two to three hours later. It's 9.30. I'm like, man, I am exhausted. I'm ready to sleep. And it, it's just like you, you get a better idea of the shimjong of parents. And, uh, you know, especially as someone who's being a leader, you get to realize more deeply of just what parents go through to take care of their children, how amazing they really are. So uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm just grateful to have another opportunity over here. Uh, as for baby Oliver, I did post up a picture on my Instagram, but, uh, one thing I do know for sure is he probably won't remember me because I'll be gone for like another four or five, maybe six months. Right. So when I come back, I don't think he's remember me at all, but that's okay. Right. That's okay. <laughs> oh, but you know what? Since we've been, you know, like I, I talked about this last week. The more and more you talk about what God has done, the more you begin to realize. And there are some more testimonies that came out from the tournament that are like, whoa, that is so crazy. Like, you get to realize uh, more, you get more realizations from it. Like, for instance, remember I, we, we talked about last week, I testified that uh, the two game-winning goals that were scored in the semifinals and the finals, in the golden goal, the overtime, both of them were scored by, two pe that, by the two players that got injured. Which is crazy, right? Because like, no, they got injured. They they sub off, but they get inspired to get back on. And in both of them scored in the last minute, right? And of course, the final goal in the finals it was the last second, which was nuts, right? But you see how God does everything according to the Sunday message, and it was through two people who got injured came back in just to play until the end. And they were able to score the winning goal, which like for me is how could you how could you not think it was God if these players were injured? You know what I mean? Like if these were like perfectly healthy people, like, oh, these people are just really, really skilled. But these are two people that were injured. Right. And then they scored at the very, very end. And another thing that I thought was really an uh, uh, amazing um testimony was what happened I, remember I told you guys that there's a pro player that was playing on the other team on the, in the final game he played second division Spain so this guy's a pro player and what happened was um uh this uh there's is this elder was preach uh, was uh, testifying at the end of service uh yesterday and he said 
the biggest advantage we have over the former faith is the word. And we're the only ones that heard the word of doing things until the end. So even though we're in the same family, like the former faith, we're like the same family, whatever it is, right? But it's different because we hear the words of this time and we know exactly what God wants right now and they don't. So the difference is because we know the word, everyone, no matter how tired, no matter how exhausted we are, we're going until the end because we know that God's going to do something at the very end. But on the flip side, the crazy part was um, in the final game uh, with like last minutes left, the best, the pro player, he subbed himself off. He didn't want to play anymore. Right? So you think about this. What, what happened was um, someone kicked the ball and the ball flew and hit him in the face. Right? And then he was kind of frustrated from that and he just subbed himself off and didn't want to play anymore for the last couple of minutes, which is kind of crazy because he was the best player on the field by far. But he subbed himself out and he didn't do it until the end. But you see, our players, you know, they did it until the end. And this is why we scored at the very, you know, this is why we scored and we won because we knew what God wanted at that time. So when I was listening to some of these testimonies, it's like, whoa, that is so, like, is incredible incredible like uh as you know i we went we had a team dinner yesterday of course i'm not on the houston team but i was in the tournament but we you know we just like two hours just talking about the tournament all the new things we realized all the things that we were understanding at a a much better at a much deeper level and i realized the same with prayer prayer too uh you could be thinking about a situation but you get into prayer you get realizations right and the holy spirit opens your heart more and you get to realize more deeply what god was doing and it was kind of like um, the times, like the two big times that we spent. One was on my birthday on the Tuesday, and the other, other one was just on Saturday night, like a team dinner. The more we talked about it, the more we started to realize more deeply about it too. And the more we started like getting inspiration from each other. And I thought that was quite amazing and awesome too. So, uh, you know, I think it's something that we have to think about is don't just, you know, you got to talk about your realizations more and more. Talk about what happened, the different, the different sides, the different angles of it, and you'll start to, uh, more, will be, more will be revealed to you. You get more information, more knowledge. And through that, like God and the Holy Spirit will give us even more realization through that. So I think it's something really, really important for all of us to keep testifying more and more. And the more you do it, the more you realize. Okay? So yeah, that, that was, yeah, it, it's pretty intense. It's only been a week, which is, quite amazing that it feels like it's been like a month ago but we've been talking about it so much uh that we've been realizing more from it too so uh hey uh the poll this will be the last day for the poll and it looks like um on the msd youtube channel we have that poll up which bible character do you relate to more and number one uh ends at david right king david someone who's considered to be a little bit more emotional uh, 37% of you picked David, and then 33% of you picked Martha, which means too into your work, too focused on your work, right? And that's like 70% of 70% of us are either from from these five options are either emotional or too emotional or uh, too focused on work, right? And that's 70% on the top two, and then the rest is like Jonah, uh, which was uh, he's kind of like uh, disobe- not disobedient, yeah, disobedient where he goes against God. And that's 14%. Paul, which is uh, too, like overzealous, is 12%. And Jacob, the lowest, was 5%. And I think I chose the wrong word for Jacob. He was a trickster or, a, you know, he was someone who deceived, um, you know, got the, he got the birthright from his brother, deceiving his brother, and also deceived his father, right? So I'm not sure what the right word, maybe a trickster more than anything else, but only 5%. Because I put manipulative, and that has a very, very negative connotation to it. So I think I'll make sure I, 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 I will not make people look so bad, right? Like Jacob wasn't a bad person at all. He was a central figure that became, um, you know, Israel, right? So uh, we'll have a new question tomorrow. And guys, if you have any cool poll questions, go ahead, put in the comments below. We'd love to hear what your poll questions are too. We'd love to hear what you guys are thinking about also, okay? And of course, tomorrow, another awesome episode, we're gonna have a Pravi in the media, gonna go deeper into the slander and what is happening around the world and what are the things media and slanders are saying and how do we interpret this properly and how do we understand it at a better level, right? And you know, we get, to, we get an idea of how they slant things so that we can understand and say, oh, okay, so they say it like this, but, you know, looking at our lives and what most of province is like, is it really like that, right? So I really, really like this, and I hope that uh, we can become even more transparent with the things going on around the world, which is public knowledge anyways, right? 
It basically is public knowledge. Like I, the only thing that I don't want to do, and I think is the smartest thing is I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to affect anything for what's happening with Sunstream right now. Like that's the thing I don't want to do. But everything else, you know, it's public knowledge. It's all out there, and I hope that we can be those that can share. Uh, think about it, get deeper into it, and realize and discuss about it too. And I think that's something that can help a lot of people also. Okay. Uh, some cool channel comments. Yeah, channel comments for the week. I really, really like it, uh, especially last week, doing it until the end. Uh, Christy over there said um, she was watching uh, the U.S. Open with Alcaraz and uh, versus Sinner. Like, yeah, literally, his last name is Sinner, S-I-N-N-E-R. And he's never seen this 19-year-old Alcaraz play, but just amazed at this person's defense. Um, he put all of his heart into getting every single shot, no matter how impossible it seemed. And um, usually, you know, some, some tennis players just let the ball go, but was super impressed with his performance and had to keep watching and supporting Alcaraz because his mentality reminded him of Sunsneem or her of Sunsneem. And the match was going on for ages and it was match point for Sinner. But... Uh, I kept thinking, just go until the end, don't give up. And miraculously, Alcaraz came back from a match point and won the game after five hours. It ended at 3 a.m. And it was the second longest game in U.S. Open history. And it happened. It was an epic match during the week of doing things until the end. And I do believe that um, he is currently in the finals. Now. Alcaraz is in the finals. 19-year-old, he's in the finals against Rudd or Rude. And whoever makes it to the end, whoever wins this one will be the world number one. So that's going to be quite intense too. Yeah. Uh, another another cool uh, channel comment was, uh, it was about the music. We're talking about the worldly music, right? And this person said, I listen to worldly music sometimes, but I try to make sure it's not inappropriate and think, if the Trinity were next to me right now, would I listen to this? And sometimes it's hard to resist though, but when I listen to romantic songs or musicals, I try to listen to them thinking about the Trinity. I think some people are more sensitive to lyrics while some people aren't. Uh, my friend told me she likes listening to K-pop because she doesn't know what they're saying. <laughs> That's kind of funny. So the lyrics don't affect you, but it sounds good. And K-pop is fun to listen to with, with non-provy people like newcomers also. And uh, another person was talking about the same thing. I feel similar. It's very hard for me to like um, this. You know, this, this is very honest and transparent. So I like this. It's hard for me to like the Pravi songs and to be very honest. Some sound very cringy to me. I learned to accept them more than anything and know they come from the heart and is what the Trinity delights in. Uh, and um, I also come from the former faith and I'm used to Hillsong music. I do miss it sometimes and listen to it as well. In the end, it's also music to praise God. I wouldn't put too much pressure on yourself. I always like to check my heart as well, right? So uh, these are you know, very, very great points. And I think a lot of people will relate to these also. Right, as these are channel, you know, these are kind of honest opinions of what is happening, and I think it's something that we can all understand and relate to. And I do think uh, the music is very, very different, and with translation, it becomes even a little bit more difficult. But I'm super grateful and thankful that we're getting music from the Man of Mission at this time, right now, which is you know, you never had that even at Jesus' time. Okay, uh, especially with Sky. Remember, guys, we are on break till September 15th and hope you guys are uh, looking forward to another video coming out pretty soon. And um, we do have YouTube. We have LinkedIn, IG Reels, TikTok. We have all these other different things. I'm working with another Providence company to start a new YouTube strategy. So very happy about this. Right and Pravi clothing. If you guys want Pravi clothing, especially do it until the end. I have that shirt and sweaters and hoodies and stuff. Go ahead, check the link in the description below. So, um, uh, let's get into uh, no. Let's get into some shout outs because there's some people out there I do need to give some shout outs to. Big shout outs to Anne in LA, Shine in uh, in Europe, and Joycelyn in Singapore. Super grateful for all of you supporting us here on Patreon for believing and supporting this channel. And um, you know, if you want to support this, uh, support us on both of these channels from Espresso with Sky to MSD. You know, uh, check out the Patreon link in the description. If you're on SoundCloud, click the blue button on the homepage. And everyone, Patreon is a crowdfunding site. So it's it's relying upon like lots of people giving small amounts monthly, right? So you can do it for like three bucks a month. It's very, very cheap. But if 100, 200, 500 people are doing that, then that, you know, then that becomes real support for the future. And at the moment, um, we have tons of stuff on the Patreon site from lecture training, Bible studies, word studies. So go ahead and check that out. And if you just want to support, basically 90% of the people on the site are supporting the channel just to support. They're not kind of even, they're not even looking at anything else. So purely up to you. All right. So let's get into some member music from around the world. Who is today's 
featured artist of the day. And on this amazing Monday, it's going to be my favorite for the last three weeks is Kuro Black and Julius from Australia with Inside My Head. After that, we have Kubachang from Japan with The Greatest Blessing 2022. And we'll end things off with Renee Lai from Taiwan with Head Above Water. All right? So I hope you guys really enjoy this. Make sure you pray for all these member artists from around the world. Society's full of zombies and I'm fighting for survival It's just me and the voice inside my head That's my rival It's peaceful in my city but I think I'm going psycho An upside down world where people look down to their idols Yeah, my mind space is like a hellscape But planet Earth's a crazy place Uh, so stay in my own world Between reality or insanity The lines of blood And I don't know Connected, but at the same time disconnected, convicted in large crowds is when I'm most on my own. Take a peek through the window of my soul. I've kept the fire burning ever since I heard that winter was coming. The coldness of their heart, there's no use running, no escaping. Deep to the bone, it leaves a king shaking in his throne. Yeah. I don't know what's real. Hey, 
愛をくれたメシアただ確信してずっと愛そう感謝があふれる死の栄光どんなに険しい道のりでも果てない壁に阻まれても It's fly away fly away、yeah. 天て拡張を目指す観難の波が押し寄せてもこんなに愛が溢れてるから立ち上がれ立ち上がれ、yeah. 一人じゃないパパが主の愛とその恵み忘れないで御言葉を行って御言葉を通し全てに勝って主の軍隊となりおごの城へ
then that was Renee Lai from Taiwan with Head Above Water. That is a cover from uh, Canadian singer Avril Lavigne. Before that, Greatest Blessing 2022, Kuma Chung from Japan. And of course, Featured Arts of the Day, Kuro Black and Julius Miyumo from Australia with Inside My Head. All right, so let's get into some news going on around the world. What have we missed over the weekend? And as brides of this history, we have that responsibility to pray for all the things going on in the world. Uh, so what are the three reasons why I watch the news? Number one. See what we need to report and pray for. Two, see what God is doing. And three, what are the things we need to comfort God's heart in? So let's start off with the Russia-Ukraine crisis. What have we missed over the last couple of days? Well, in the Kharkiv offensive, Ukrainian army says it has tripled, re tripled retaken area. So Ukraine's military says its forces have retaken over 3,000 square miles during a rapid counteroffensive in eastern Ukraine. The remarkable advance, if confirmed, means Kyiv's forces have tripled their state, uh, stated gains in little over 48 hours. On Thursday, <coughs> excuse me, on Thursday evening, President Zelensky put the figure at 1,000 square kilometers and then 2,000 square kilometers on Saturday evening. The BBC cannot verify the Ukrainian figures and journalists have been denied access to the front lines. On Saturday, the eastern counterattack saw Ukrainian troops enter the vital Russian-held supply towns of Izium and Kupiansk, but UK defense officials have warned that fighting has continued outside those towns and officials in Kyiv said Ukrainian forces were still fighting to gain control of a number of settlements around Izium. Russia's defense ministry confirmed its forces retreat from uh, Izium itself and Kupiansk, which it said would allow its forces to regroup in territory held by Moscow-backed separatists. The Russian ministry also confirmed the withdrawal of troops from a third key town, Bal uh, Balaklia, in order to bolster efforts on the Donetsk front. Ukrainian forces entered the town on Friday. At the same time, the head of the Russia-installed administration in the Kharkiv region recommended that its people evacuate to Russia to to save lives. Unverified footage on social media appeared to show long queues of traffic building up at border crossings. The governor of the Belgorod border region in Russia uh, said thousands of people had crossed into the country. Now, on Saturday, uh, there was a mobile catering, heating, and medical assistance that, that would be available to people fleeing the Ukraine advance. Meanwhile, uh, the general commander of Ukraine's military said his forces had advanced to within 50 kilometers of the Russian border. The pace of the counterattack has caught the Russians off guard, and Chechen leader, uh, his name is Ramzan Kadyrov, a staunch supporter of President Putin, appeared to question the Russian retreat. In a message posted, a posted Telegram, Mr. Kadyrov said if there was not a change in Russian fortunes, he would be forced to question the country's leadership to explain the situation. But Russians still hold around a fifth of the country, and few imagine a swift end to the war. And Mr. Kadyrov uh, himself insisted Russia will win, and NATO weapons would be crushed. The Ukrainian advances, if held, would be the most significant frontline changes since Russia withdrew from areas around Kyiv in April. Kupiansk served as Russia's main eastern supply hub and the loss of Izium, which Moscow spent over a month trying to take at the beginning of the war, would be seen as a major humiliation for President Putin. Now, according to one military expert, the advance marks the first time since World War II that whole Russian units have been lost. The gains will also be seen as a sign that Ukraine's army has the capacity to retake occupied territory, crucial as Kyiv continued to ask hard-pressed Western allies for military support. Also on the other end, the UN says a blackout threatens Zaporozhitsya nuclear plant. The head of the UN nuclear agency has warned that the situation at the Russian-held Zaporozhitsya uh, nuclear plant in Ukraine is increasingly precarious. Rafael Grossi said shelling had knocked out power in the nearby city of Enerhodar, which fed the plant and was unlikely to be restored. The operator was considering switching off the last reactor, Mr. Grossi said, and this would make the plant totally reliant on emergency diesel generators to prevent a nuclear accident. This is an unstable situation and is becoming increasingly precarious, he said in a statement, and this is completely unacceptable. It cannot stand. Mr. Grossi did not say whether Russia or Ukraine was responsible for the shelling, but said that it must stop immediately. Both countries have blamed each other for fighting in the vicinity of the plant, which is close to the front line and has been occupied along with Enerhodar Hodar by the Russians since early in the invasion. Mr. Grossi, who visited the plant himself earlier this month, said he had learnt on Friday from his staff who are still there that a serious situation had developed overnight. And he also said that power to the city of Enerhodar, home to the most, uh, home to most of the plant operators and their families, had been destroyed by shelling, and this has led to a complete power blackout. And in Enerhodar, no running water, no power, no sewage. 
uh, and this is what his statement explained. And given the increased and continued shelling, there's little likelihood of reestablishing reliable offsite power, he continued, especially as the shelling continually and repeatedly damages the power infrastructure. If the operator shuts down the only remaining reactor, the entire power plant would then be fully reliant on emergency diesel generators for ensuring vital nuclear safety and security functions, Mr. Grassi added. The increasingly dire circumstances in Enerhodar could also impact essential staffing at the plant, he said. So that is what is happening over there in uh, the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Let's move over to New York. And uh, New York in the U.S., very, very interesting. New York declares state of emergency over polio. So the governor of New York has declared a state of emergency over polio as evidence emerges that the virus is spreading across the state. Health officials say wastewater samples in New York City and four adjacent co uh, counties have tested positive for a polio virus that can cause paralysis. Although only one case has so far been confirmed, it was um, the first in the country in nearly a decade. Polio was largely eradicated from the U.S. by vaccinations that began in 1955. By 1979, the U.S. has uh, was declared polio-free. But according to New York officials, vaccination rates are too low in parts of the state. And Friday's emergency declaration is aimed at boosting flagging immunization rates. There is no cure for polio. But it can be prevented by the vaccine, mostly affecting children. The virus typically causes muscle weakness and paralysis, and in the most serious cases, permanent disability and death. New York State Health Department said it aims to boost vaccination rates from the current statewide average of about 79% to above 90%. And on polio, basically, they can't really roll the dice on this. So Health Commissioner Dr. Mary Bassett said in a statement, if you or your child are unvaccinated or not up to date with vaccinations, the risk of paralytic disease is real. And she added that for every one case of paralytic polio observed, there may be hundreds or uh, of other people infected. An inactivated polio vaccine is used in both the U.S. and the U.K. as part of the routine childhood program. Uh, in the U.S., about 93% of toddlers have received at least three doses of the polio jab, according to vaccination data from the CDC. Officials began monitoring wastewater in the state for polio virus after an unvaccinated man in Rockland County, just north of New York City, contracted the virus in July, the first recorded case since 2013, and suffered paralysis. The case was later genetically linked to paralytic polio found in a wastewater sample collected from nearby Nassau County in August. Wastewater samples in Orange County, Sullivan County, and the five boroughs of New York City have also tested positive for paralytic polio, and the emergency order issued on Friday by Governor Kathy Hochul is the state's third this year, in addition to similar orders issued in response to the coronavirus pandemic and monkeypox. It empowers emergency medical workers, midwives, and pharmacists to join the network of providers who can roll out the polio vaccine. Uh, last but not least, we'll go to Hong Kong. It says that five people are jailed for seditious children's books. So five speech therapists in Hong Kong have been jailed for 19 months, each after being found guilty of publishing seditious children's books. Authorities interpreted the books about sheep trying to hold back wolves from their village as referring to Hong Kong and the Beijing government. The authors argued the books chronicled history from the people's perspective, but a government-picked judge concluded they were a brainwashing exercise. The sentencing comes amid a crackdown on civil liberties since 2020 when China imposed a new national security law. Uh, Beijing said the law was needed to bring stability to the city, but critics said it was designed to squash dissent and weaken Hong Kong's autonomy. Hong Kong is a special administrative region of China and has a one country, two systems principle, which is designed to give the city freedom, uh, certain freedoms. The five speech therapists um, have already spent more than a year in jail awaiting the verdict, and one of their lawyers said they could be released within a month because of the time already served. The group, who are aged between 25 and 28, produced cartoon ebooks that some interpreted as trying to explain Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement to children. In one of the three books, a village of sheep fight back against a group of wolves who are trying to take over their settlement. And on Saturday, the five speech therapists maintained the books were meant to help children understand systemic injustice. But judge, uh, the judge accused the speech therapists of sowing the seed of instability in the city and across China. And they were charged under a colonial era sedition law, which until recently had been rarely used by prosecutors rather than the 2020 national security law. So there it is. Uh, that's what's happening over there in Hong Kong. And uh, I hope that uh, it gives us an idea of the things that we can really pray for too.
Okay, so that moves us into some sporting news. What's happening around the world in sports? Well, the tennis U.S. Open is happening right. The men's final is happening right now between Rude and Alcarez, a 19-year-old, and the winner of that is going to be uh, the number one seed. But the women's side is finished. Number one, Iga Swiatek tops Ons Jabur in women's U.S. Open final to win third major title. And none of that matters now, cementing her status as her, as her sport's new dominant figure by winning what is expected to be the last tournament of Serena Williams' career. The number one ranked Swiatek outplayed number five, 6276 in Arthur Ashe Stadium on Saturday to claim her first championship at the U.S. Open and third Grand Slam title overall. And of course, like I said, men's final is happening right now at this moment. Who's going to win the U.S. Open men's title? We're not sure, but uh, will it be Carlos Alcaraz, the 19-year-old phenom who will look to join Pete Sampras as the only teenage males to win the U.S. Open since 1968? Or will it be Casper Ruud, who made it all the way to the French Open final earlier this year before losing to Rafael Nadal? And uh, we'll see what happens, and I'll report on that one tomorrow. Uh, in NFL news, an opening game was done on, uh, on on Thursday. It was the Buffalo Bills versus the LA Rams, and Buffalo just annihilated them 31-10. to Josh Allen, 297 yards, three TDs, but two interceptions. Matt Stafford, not a good game. 240 yards, one TD, and three interceptions. Stefan Diggs with uh, 122 yards receiving and a touchdown, and Cooper Cup, 128 yards and a touchdown. Von Miller uh, had two sacks, and Aaron Donald had one sack. Also, Lamar Jackson. Uh, in his saga, they found out that he declined a $250 million extension offer and wants uh, a deal fully guaranteed at signing, sources say. Although Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens have kept details of their contract negotiations private, the star quarterback turned down five-year extension offer worth over $250 million with $133 million guaranteed at signing, sources told ESPN. The extension, which ran through the 2027 season, would have increased the total value of Jackson's deal to just under $274 million over six years, according to sources. Jackson would have played out the $23 million fifth year option on his rookie deal before the extension started in 2023 uh last but not least we'll go into some mma news ufc 279 happened over the weekend and nate diaz submits tony ferguson right uh on saturday night with tony ferguson as the opponent after a bizarre unprecedented several days diaz will leave the promotion as a winner courtesy of a guillotine choke submission at two minutes 52 seconds of the fourth round in the main event at t-mobile arena diaz was originally supposed to fight chimeyev but Chimeyev missed weight by 7.5 pounds Friday, coming in at 178.5 for a 171-pound uh, limit bout. Diaz understandably opted not to fight an opponent who was so overweight, and Diaz called Chimeyev um, a bad word, right? And then he said he only trained wrestling during this camp because Chimeyev is a dominant wrestler. Uh, so what happened then? So that uh, Kamzat Chimeyev rolls to the first round win over Kevin Holland after UFC 279 main card shakeup. So Chimeyev missed the major opportunity to take out one of the biggest stars in MMA history. Uh, and he submitted Kevin Holland, who is 23-8 uh, and eight with uh, a Dars choke at 213 of the opening round inside T-Mobile Arena. And it was a dominant performance by Chimeyev, but it came one day after he missed weight for a scheduled welterweight main event against Nate Diaz. All right. So there it is, guys. That is the top news in sports and world news. Hope you guys really enjoyed that more than anything else. But you know what that means. It is the golden time. And yes, it is the golden time, a time of praise and worship to the Holy Trinity. Hope all of you guys are looking forward to giving glory to God and the Holy Spirit. So, what are we going to praise today? And this is the week of prayer. Prayers work. So the first song is Prayers Work, and then Fight on Your Knees, and we'll end things off with Thanksgiving of Grace. So, as one body of the Morning Star Drive, let's spend this time giving praise, honor, and glory to the Holy Trinity. do just as things get done when you make effort praying what you ask will be granted if your prayers meet God's heart you should pray not just for yourself but pray for your brother's nation and world pray sincere
Spirit, 
I thank you, I thank you, Holy Son, Lord of love. I thank you, I thank you, thank you, my Lord. Lord, you've helped us open up our eyes and to give thanks with every word we speak. We all sing praise to God, the one who made and formed our souls and spirits. We all give thanks through songs of praise. He has been the warm rays of the sun, and He has been the fresh air that we breathe. The Spirit's warm embrace, and the sweet rain of grace sent down upon us. God raised our spirits with His love. I praise and thank you, Lord. I sing to you with love. My spirit's changed into a bride, so Lord be glorified. For me, you're always there. My spirit's in your care. The stream of thanks and grace now overflows. I thank you, I thank you, Jehovah, Lord of hosts. I thank you, I thank you, Mother of my spirit. I thank you, I thank you, Holy Son, Lord of love. I thank you, I thank you, thank you, my Lord. Through you, Lord, I have a brand new life. I can live as your beloved bride. I'll only love you, Lord, for you have taught me about the life of heaven. My spirit will rejoice and sing. I praise and thank you, Lord. I sing to you with love. My spirit's changed into a bride, so Lord be glorified. For me, you're always there. My spirit's in your care. The stream of thanks and grace now overflows. Praise and thank you, Lord. I sing to you with love. My spirit's changed into a bride. So Lord, be glorified. For me, you're always there. My spirit's in your care. The stream of thanks and grace now overflows. I praise and thank you, Lord. I sing to you with love. My spirit's changed into a bride. So Lord, be glorified. And there it is, an oldie but a goodie, that is Thanksgiving of Grace, or The Grace of Thanksgiving. Hope you guys really, really enjoyed that song. That's one of my favorite all-time songs. I love that song, so I sing that song all the time. Uh, before that, Fight on Your Knees, and of course, Prayer is Work. That is the title of this week's message, all right? So let's get into the word study for today now that our hearts are made prepared and ready through uh, the time of praise and worship. So every Monday, as we always do, we're going to start going over this week's uh, Sunday message. And of course, um, these messages are not easy, right? These are messages that uh, only the key points from Sun Team are given and, and uh, head leaders have to make a sermon out of them and a lot more respect even now as they do these sermons. Uh, this week's message is prayer is work. A lot of different scriptures that came out, Romans 8, 26, Mark chapter, uh, was it 11 or was it uh, 1, verse 23 to 29? Uh, Psalms chapter 4 verse 1 a lot of really really good scriptures out there so I, I hope that everyone is really enjoying this week's message a lot of good key points uh, coming from it so uh, when we look at like the scripture analysis uh, of the story it's a father begging Jesus uh, Jesus disciples to drive out a demon out of his son but they couldn't do it so they're after the, 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 the disciples couldn't do it the father comes and begs Jesus and then, you know, they're like, please heal my son. And Jesus replies uh, that it's, a, it's only possible for the one that believes. And the father had a very interesting response is, I believe and help me to overcome my disbelief. Right? So he believes it, but still has a little bit in there. And uh, basically, Jesus comes out, commands the spirits out of his son and, this son. and the son violently convulses and looks lifeless. But Jesus lifts up this person. And interesting point that brought out was, uh, it wasn't just the son that came to life. Everyone who saw it came to life and believed in God, right? They believed. So, you know, you, you see that when these testimonies, these things that we see live with our um, with our own eyes, like say, for instance, the, all those people there that were there for the soccer tournament last week, it's still being talked about, you know, and, and you might be thinking, isn't that old news? But you realize 
uh, when you see a miracle like this happen, and I'm going to be honest with you guys too, because of the pandemic, you don't see like God at a large scale. We only hear about something maybe happening in Korea or another country, but you don't really see it like right in front of your eyes or like you're actually a participant of it. Like everyone was during this last soccer tournament, seeing all the crazy miracles that God did. But, you know, we have to understand even, it, it was just an amazing, amazing event. And, uh, all those people watching were like, wow, this is really God that did this, right? And, you know, we have to understand that uh, that when, when you look at, at from the full picture, even when Jesus was making these amazing miracles happen, how could it be done, right? Once he did it, everybody who's watching are in display, like, oh my, I can't believe he did this. And they begin to believe in God even more because they see it with their own eyes, right? And I, I think that's something that we have to really be able to, that's why I, I think it's one of those huge things where we, whenever there's a major event in Providence, we got to go watch it. We got to go visit it, right? We got to go see Sunsim, right? Because when, when Sunsim is there, God is there and you're going to see amazing miracles happen. Uh, when we have these big events in your country, your nation, whatever it is, you're going to see God working even more than ever, right? And, you know, even today, because uh, it's Sunday over here, uh, I just played soccer uh, with the Houston team and, it was just another reminder of how great God is because the exact same thing happened. Well, it was very, very similar. What happened was uh, we their first half, first half we were losing 4-0. Second half, we tie it 4-4. It goes into golden goal again. And guess guess what? Exact same thing happened. It was uh, the same person who scored the PK was the one that scored the winner to end the game. And it's kind of just a reminder that this was, you know, this is something that actually, you know, is reminding us that this was only a week ago. You guys can testify about this even more, right? And, you know, people are able to change when they hear testimonies and say, wow, I can't believe God did this. And then they can change even more. Okay, so uh, I, I thought it, it was a great point. Uh, when Jesus commanded uh, the spirits to leave and then put the hand, put his hands literally on the problem and it was solved, everyone comes to life and believes, even though even those who are just watching. So the question comes in now is, why couldn't the disciples drive out the demons? And, you know, there's two big reasons we heard from the message. Sorry, I'm still sweating and I'm still uh, really, really hot right now because I'm coming right after sports. Um, but the first case was because he's the one with the mission. And the second reason is because it can only come down through prayer. And it was a great point is there's a lot of problems that happen in this world that all of us are facing, whether at a small, you know, individual level or a national or a world level, but there's so many different ways to solve it. Right. But like, say, if you look at the case, you know, it's in some cases, like with this child that's suffering from demon possession, it was Jesus who was the one that was able to make this child healthy. The disciples couldn't do it because Jesus is the Savior and Jesus is the one that prayed, right? And, you know, uh, Jesus told the disciples, you could do it if you pray, which which basically means that they weren't either they weren't praying enough or they didn't pray for that situation, right? Or in other words, and I like this point here, is the one with the mission can do it, right? The one with the mission. So when we think about, oh, the one with the mission is the man of mission. No, it's not just talking about that. Like, of course, it's talking about the man of mission. But in all the different, like, things that we have inside of our churches, like, we have other missions, like someone in charge of tech, right? No matter how hard someone else is trying to figure out how to, you know, why isn't it, um, why isn't it broadcasting? Why is it not working? It's the person with the mission. It's the tech person that is the one that knows how to do it right? It's the one with the mission that can do it because they know, they understand, they know everything perfectly, completely, so they're able to do the work. Which means that if you haven't received that mission and you don't know how to do it, then what happens? All you can really do is give suggestion, maybe talk, and probably you'll only hinder the one with the mission more than anything else. So the one with the mission always takes action faithfully, Right, So that's why all of us here too, of course we're talking about praying for the man of mission, but pray for the one with the mission is the same as pray for the one like the mission of preaching. On Sundays, pray for the one with the mission. Pray for the one with the mission of presiding. Pray for the one with the mission of, uh, of praise. Head leader can't do everything. They can't do the presiding plus the praise plus the tech. They can't do all those things, right? 
And it's the one with the mission that can handle it and they can do it completely until the end, right? And if you look at, you know, if you, what, what Sun seems talking about right now is it's people, um, people who are in Providence that are causing problems because they are not the ones with the mission. And instead, they're kind of nagging others, telling them what to do as if they know, but they don't really know what's going on. Which means the big thing is, excuse me, if you haven't received the mission, then don't do it. Find the one with the mission, right? You have to do it after you receive the mission. So we can't be those that are kind of greedy about the mission, uh, especially for things that are like for missions that don't even belong to us. So we don't overstep. We don't do what we're not authorized to do, which means, you know, what it, it means is understand how important it is to get the mission, right? How important it is for you to get that mission is such a big thing that you got the mission for praise leader. You got the mission for the drummer. You got the mission for tech. You got the mission for cleanup and setup. That is really important things. And you are the one that has to kind of take control because that's your mission, right? You can't take a mission and just let everyone else walk over you and tell you what to do when, it, when that's your mission. Because in the end, who gets in trouble? It's the one with the mission. You know what I mean? If you have the mission and things don't work out and you can't just say, well, they told me to do, no, it's your mission, right? So two things. Number one is if you don't have the mission, don't overstep into other people's, right? Don't step on other people's toes and don't do what you're not authorized to do, right? So we need to be those that, uh, you know, pray deeply, right? And, you know, this is this is the reason why we're getting a message about prayer because Sun Seen prayed deeply and now God is letting him realize more deeply about prayer, which is this week's message is what? It is prayer is work. It's re prayer is work. And you have to consider that time of prayer, the time that you are actually working on something. Don't think about it like, oh, this is a job. This is my work, right? Like, you know, oh, my dear, oh I got to do this kind of thing. That's not what it's talking about, Right. It's actually working on something. And when you're praying, you know, when you're actually working on something, you have to think about this. People work on stuff because it matters to them, right? Like if you're making money, it matters to, to support your children, to support people, right? You have to work on things that matter, right? And these things should matter to you and you're actually working on it and it's something that you want to do, something you want to resolve, like a project you got to get done for school. You want to get it done. You got to get the grades for the job to make money, right? And prayer is the same as kind of sitting down, brainstorming, thinking, and working on something and trying to solve it. Because ultimately, you know, we don't solve things without thinking. Problem comes up and we sit down and we just rack our brains until, oh, what does this mean? What does this mean? Oh, what do we have to do here? And it's as much as we work on it is as much as we get done. So, you know, we have to understand this. And in this way, if we pray about something, if we pray about something and, um, uh, if we want something to turn out well and get resolved, we need to pray about it, right? And everything depends on how much you pray about it more than anything else. So when Sun was like praying, you know, he's realizing why prayer is work. And, you know, we know Sun situation right now. And he, and he says, if something torments you and causes anxiety, suffering, pain. So we know what, this is what Sun is going through, right? We really want to solve this problem. But, it's not something, you know, think about the situations where it's giving you anxiety because you can't get there. You're not the one that can go in and resolve it, right? So sometimes there's a problem in another country. There's a problem somewhere else and you want to help with it, but you can't do anything about it. And it just gives you suffering, pain, and anxiety. The only thing left is to be anxious because you can't do it yourself. But we have to realize one of the most powerful things in this week's scripture, in this week's message is, the biggest thing you can do in this situation is pray. If you can't get involved, if you can't solve it yourself, then do the work by praying and solve it yourself. Right? And you're like, well, how does that work if I pray? Well, then God will send the person with the mission. That's the most important part. Because even if you could go to that other country to help it, you, what if you're not the lawyer? Right? What if you're not someone who has the mission? The most important thing is, if you can't, even if you went to that place and you couldn't solve it, need to pray. And through that prayer, God will send someone with the mission, 
right? Government, government authorities, people with power, they'll all be able to... This is the most important part. You want God to send the person with the mission. Send that lawyer. Send that government official. Send that person who is an expert. And this is how God is going to help you uh, as and help and answer your prayers. It's usually sending someone with a mission or basically God will change that situation around. So we kind of need to get ourselves out of that mentality of saying, I can't do it because... Um, I can't. I can't be there directly. Oh, I'm stuck over here. I can't go there. Do it by praying. Even like, let's just say it was a soccer game, and you're stuck at the airport, and like, oh, I wish I was there to help the team to play. And even if you're the best scorer, what's the what's the biggest thing you can do at that moment is pray. Right? Then it's the Holy Trinity that can do the work for you, the work that you couldn't do anyways. Right? Yeah. Sometimes you can go and do it, but what if you can't get it done? And this is why you need the person with the mission to do it. So the key point of this first key point I really liked was if you can't personally go and do it, then pray. Right? And that's why Sensei was like going, I sent even more time out to pray right now. Because it gets done as much as you do. Your matters get resolved as much as you do the work of prayer. Do a lot of work. You need a lot of time. The bigger the problem, the more time you need. And then that uh, the astounding stat since he's been praying for 60 years and he's prayed like 70,000 hours, which is about three hours a day for 60 years in his entire life. That's crazy. How many people can do three hours a day for their entire life? But if you think about it, he had to have. Because through prayer, he came to realize the purpose of creation. Through prayer, he realized the time, times, and half a times. Through prayer, he realizes the, you know, uh, the, the fall. Through prayer, he realizes his mission. And through prayer, now look at him now, preaching and uh, on a global scale more than anything else. This is why we have to be the one, be the ones that pray. Pray will be the, the, the best way to do it. If something you need to get done, you got to pray. You got to set that condition. So here's a big question. I think this is something that answers a lot for, you know, for people when it comes to working really hard at something. But sometimes nothing really shows from it, right? And you're like, why the heck doesn't it show up? Right? So we don't know, how, you know, and there's two big reasons. Number one is you don't know how to do it properly. So even though you work really hard, you're not doing it properly. So what does that mean? It means it doesn't show. It doesn't show because you just didn't do it properly. Where someone who is an expert at it may be able to do it in half the time and something will show. And the second reason we have to understand is... Uh, you're not focused, right? You're not focused on the work. So you're either distracted by other things, which means that you're kind of only doing this casually and not doing it with absolute quality. And that, that, that's another major problem. So we have to be focused, right? If, we don't, if you're not focused, like number one is no, learn how to do it properly. But the second one is you got to focus absolutely on it. Whether it comes to like business, politics, relationships, whatever it is, all the work you do in your life requires proper understanding and effort and focus, right? When you start a job, when you start to work, teaching someone, managing someone, you got to learn, focus, work, learn how to do it, put in the effort, and then you can do it faster than you thought you could with absolute results. And in the same way too, we need to understand uh, when it comes to prayer, the work of prayer we need to, it's the same thing. You got to learn how to do it properly. And we got to learn how to pray properly. When you pray, your thoughts should be clear, knowing exactly what you want to pray about. And then you can pray well. Then how much you pray will be noticeable. Then someone who's kind of praying casually for like, no matter even if it's like two, three hours, they're in and out of the zone, they're falling asleep. There's nothing noticeable about it. But when your thoughts are absolutely clear and you're focused then power and strength from that prayer comes within you and then the holy spirit comes to help you that's kind of like romans chapter 8 verse 26 right the spirit intercedes for us and then we can get things resolved because that the inner groans of our spirit is telling us what we need to pray for so i hope that all of us here you know there's those things we need to personally solve and work on and you know some things are you know in some of these matters they got to be done by prayer, right? All these things we need to resolve in our life, it's prayer. So let's do the responsibility and do the work of prayer.
So, you know, I, I like that uh, that second part is, um, you know, when we're learning how to pray, it's about sincerity and being genuine. Like you got to really talk about how you think and feel about the situation. So when you pray, make sure you know who you're addressing. Be earnest, convey your thoughts in heart, and then you receive that revelation that comes through feelings. And then the Holy Trinity will even say, ah, I got it, and you get that inspiration. So, you know, Sun Tzu becomes uh, kind of, that person who is a model for this since he was young, right? He's been praying so much and he's realized through all these prayers he's done, the things that don't get fulfilled, like there's a lot of prayers that don't get fulfilled and for two reasons. Number one is uh, he wasn't sincere enough and number two is the time hasn't come. So it's like, hey, I prayed sincerely. How come it's not happening? You're waiting for the time. Number two is you didn't pray sincerely and you're kind of not praying that, that, that well anyway, so it's not going to be answered either, right? So it's either you prayed sincerely and the, you're waiting for the time and you got to keep praying until the end or you didn't pray sincerely and you got to start praying sincerely to get that problem resolved. And I, I think that's something that we have to really think about is, oh, why isn't it, why isn't it, um, why isn't it resolved? And we will get those answers and looking at those two things, a, did you pray sincerely? The answer is yes, then wait for the time and keep praying. If it's B, no, then it means you need to start praying sincerely then. So the key, that second message was pray with earnestness and with sincerity, right? And not just, you know, not just prayer. Listen to the word in this way. Especially this year, guys. This year is the year of prayer in the word. So we need to pray with that earnesty. We got to pray with that sincerity. And then the Holy Trinity will give us, it will give us the word, right? And we, you know, and don't just, don't just listen to the word, but you got to pray earnestly and sincerely to receive that word of life. That's the words of life. If you heard the words and you get nothing from it, then you got to listen to it again or pray and say, God, what, what's, what are the words of life you're trying to give me today? So, you know, there's a, there's a lot we need to understand even more. Right, even I, I like it when it's like when something like saying, hey, if you want to deliver the word, pray. If you want, if you're listening to the word, pray to listen to the word well. If you want to evangelize, pray so the Holy Spirit inspires you who to evangelize. You know, if you want to learn how to live your life, pray earnestly to the Holy Trinity. Then you will know how to live your life. Right, whatever you, whatever problems you face, you gotta pray. Prayer is everything. And that third message was great too. Right? It's talking about all the people that prayed a lot in the, in the Bible. And that's something I think that you guys, you guys, we all of us have to read the Bible. Who prayed? Moses prayed to lead the people. Noah prayed to learn about the judgment of the flood and to build the ark and avoid judgment. Abraham prayed while giving offering every day and he became the ancestor of faith. Jacob and Joseph prayed and resolved their hardships. David prayed at all times, even in war. Prophets and all these other people, they prayed so much to carry out the will of God. And we have to be those, why would Sunstein give us those examples? Because that's who we're supposed to be. We're supposed to do the exact same thing that if the Bible was written about our life, we would be doing the same thing, praying to resolve our problems. So I really, really hope that all of us here this week, you know, putting all those things, even though you can't be, that first point was even though you can't be there, the, the work you can do is pray. And then God will send the man of mission or change the situation. Right? What was that, what was that um, uh, second message? Second me message is pray, with, pray sincerely and earnestly and tell God what you really feel about the situation. Right? Really have that prayer. And then God and the Holy Trinity, they're going to listen to us when, when we do that key earnest and sincere prayer, pleading to God. And that third message was, you know, about all the people that prayed a lot and they fulfilled God's will. If anything else, guys, the earnest prayer that we need is to fulfill God's will. Right? It's always about fulfilling God's will. And then everything else that we have in our lives will be fulfilled too. So everyone, don't forget to pray. God receives all the prayers of tears. And you know what? Don't, you know, some of you are like, oh, I can't pray. No, it's not about the prayers that come out of your, the tears coming out of your eyes. Something even said, sometimes he prays the invisible tears of Shimjong. You know how deep that prayer is? Right? And I hope it's something that all of us can understand even more. Right? Who is the only one in this world that, that can take responsibility for every single problem of yours? It's only God. Only God. So the last thing, uh, 
set the time of prayer this week if you haven't already. Is it the 2 p.m. for you? What fits you? You have the pre-dawn, which is one and easy. Before you sleep, which is an easy one. But during the day, what, 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 what time do you want to pray? What's the best time for you? Where you're not always moving your times around, but you're going to be like, that is my set time to pray. Make sure you have that set time. Right? And so it seems like saying, I'm not telling you just to do this. I'm telling you because I did it. Right? I did this. Remember this week's message, prayer is work. And now that we've received the mentality to do this, we have to be responsible through prayer for our churches, for our nation, the world, for ourselves, for our families. Invest the time to pray. The work gets done as much as you pray. Okay? So another uh, just a really wonderful message this week. And we know that the key, once again, it is to pray. Pray like it's your work, the work that's going to fulfill and solve your problems. Okay? So there it is, guys. That is uh, the work study for today. Leave a comment below if you have anything that you really, really, um, uh, if you have any other points that you really wanted to talk about too. Okay? So let's go to the song of choice on this Filipino Monday. Uh, there's an awesome, awesome singer. Her name is Sarah Geronimo. She's considered one of the top three singers in the Philippines. And uh, great song. I like this love song called I Just Fall in Love Again. So everyone, uh, please welcome Sarah G with I Just Fall in Love Again. <laughs>
And there you have it. That is Sarah Geronimo with I Just Fall in Love Again. Uh, that's on. Uh, that's another great song for this Filipino Monday. Hope you guys really enjoyed that song. If you have any uh, requests for any other Filipino songs, go ahead and leave in the comments below. would love to play that next week. All right, so let's get into the last segment for today. And of course, every single Monday, we have a special segment uh, from Eddie Kwan in San Francisco with 2G Talks. Everyone, I hope you guys really enjoy these. Make sure you leave a nice comment for him too. All right, everyone, this is Eddie Kwan with 2G Talks. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another week's episode of 2G Talks. Uh, I'm so glad to be here and to be able to speak to you guys because uh, as always, you know, every week there's so much that goes on, right? And I know the same thing is true for each one of you guys. Uh, and it's I'm, I'm assuming that for most of you guys, when you guys listen to this segment and to, uh, you know, the Monday episodes of MSC 117.8, it's kind of generally around the same time, right? So uh, just as I'm reflecting on the week prior I think it's really great to be able to see everyone being able to reflect uh, from last week until right now the things that you might have experienced too and to be able to kind of share these things with one another uh, and so as we make our way into today's segment uh, I really pray that it's not just me who uh, you know is thinking these things by myself uh, but that we're able to share with one another uh, and I'm really glad for the sort of engagement that we have both, uh, you know, in the comment section below. And some people have reached out to me personally, too, to, you know, and we've, you know, had conversations over the phone or uh, through uh, the variety of messenger apps that we use uh, in Providence. Uh, and so for anyone interested below, too, I would love to get connected with you guys uh, on anything. Um, and so feel free to reach out, you know, whether it's uh, in the comment section or online. Uh, I know I gave an email address uh, and I will continue to check that too, but email isn't, you know, the the uh, most regular form of communication that we all use, right? Um, and so, you know, it would be really great to uh, hear what you guys have to say and to even, even be able to hear your voice because that's not something that uh, I get to do too often uh, on my end, right? So to give kind of like a rough overview of last week, man, it's... Uh, uh, for those of you guys who listened to the, uh, last week's episode, you know that I caught COVID um, the week prior. Uh, so it's been about two weeks, uh, a little over 10 days now, 10, 11 days. Uh, and, you know, they say that after you show symptoms, after about 10 days, you're no longer uh, contagious to other people. Uh, and But my work has a policy that says, like, after five days, if you test negative, uh, then you can come back to work. Uh, but if you test positive then you can't come back to work until at least after 10 days. And after 10 days, even if you don't um, get tested, you can come back. Uh, and so, but anyways, that, that's, I'm sharing that to tell you that I was originally hoping to go back to work uh, last Thursday and to be able to work Thursday, Friday, and maybe even the weekend. Uh, but when I took the test, uh, I had a very, very faint test line. Uh, to, to show that I was positive. It was so faint. It was so faint. I was like, man, is this, uh, is this, is this uh, a positive result? And they were like, yes, if you see anything, um, then it means you're still positive. So don't come back to work. So uh, I, I didn't go back to work on Thursday and Friday. And uh, for those of you guys who live within California, you'll know it was super hot this week. Right. In the Bay Area, like San Francisco, had like a heat wave. It was it was crazy. It was so 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 hot uh, for the Bay Area standard. Uh, I've I've been in many other parts of the world, so I know that you know the Bay typically has really great weather, right? There's really nothing to complain about. But it was really hot. It was about a hundred degrees Fahrenheit, which to everyone else living across the world is about thirty eight degrees Celsius. <laughs> it's funny, right? When I was younger, I used to be able to to be able to convert the two very easily uh, because America is the only place that uses the Fahrenheit system. Uh, but, you know, over time, I've, I've forgotten how to do it. But, yeah, I looked it up. It's about 38 degrees Celsius. And some of you guys might be thinking, oh, that's not bad. Like, I don't know what part of the world you reside in. Uh, but California is really not uh, aptly equipped to deal with temperatures that high for that long. Uh, like most of our older buildings and houses don't have uh, air conditioning. 
um, and it's it's hard to go for that prolonged of a period at that temperature. And plus, I was sick in that weather, so it was just it was horrible. <laughs> uh, and you know, it was so bad that our grid, our our like you know our grid, our power grid, uh, went out because people had you know so many electronics running, and it wasn't you know intended to uh, source that many things for that prolonged of a period uh, that the government had to send out you know warnings to people to say hey let's. <laughs> let's dial back on our usage of uh, you know electronics because you know uh, probably a lot of people are using it to try to cool down their homes and to uh, power different uh, things people you know uh, Tesla is also really big right and electronic vehicles is something that's really big in the Bay Area and people were having a hard time charging their cars because our power grid couldn't handle it so it was just that hot uh, and so that's what we were experiencing here in the Bay Area and like I said, I don't know what uh, what's considered hot or cold in the part of the world where you live. Uh, and but, you know, that's what we we're going through this earlier this week. So, you know, there's one kind of recurring theme that I want to talk about today. And I'll make this really quick because uh, even the introduction took some time. Um, and it's really about understanding other people. And uh, <laughs> I guess a bigger way, an easier way to think about it is by misunderstanding other people. Right, so as I mentioned, because it was very hot and I didn't work Thursday and Friday, I was like, okay, I can't stay home. I have fans running like constantly just because it's so hot, but the fans aren't really helping, right? It's not really cooling down the temperature, it's just blowing hot air in my face. Uh, and so I was like, okay, I can't see people. I'm still positive. I can't go to work um, because the test is still positive. So I'm going to go out. I'm going to go someplace where like there aren't that many people and when i looked at the heat map across the bay area it was like only in like san francisco which is like right along the water that it was like cooler so i was like okay i'm just gonna go to uh like not san francisco because there's probably you know people there but i'm gonna go to a city uh, a little bit south of san francisco and maybe just go to the beach right just by myself in, in a secluded area uh and so i did that and yeah it was a lot cooler there uh, and the entire time I was there, you know, I was praying a lot too about, you know, certain things in my future and, you know, about my situation. Uh, and I was also, you know, listening to the audio Bible and also listening to uh, the Chronicles of Narnia series. I don't know if you guys have ever read that series by C.S. Lewis, right? It's so famous, right? Uh, and there's movies made about the series too. Uh, and C.S. Lewis was a very staunch uh, Christian too. Uh, so he he has a lot of books right outside of his fiction novels about you know faith and Christianity too right uh, so I was listening to it and you know the uh, I was I'm, I'm about halfway through all of the books right so um, uh, I'm in the book about Prince Caspian which uh, there has been a movie made about that one too uh, I think it's one of the less famous ones but uh, in the middle of the book. Actually, oh, actually, no, this is the book before that. It's called The Horse and the Boy. Um, and if you guys know anything about the the Chronicles of Narnia, there's kind of like a god figure, right, in the series. And the the god figure is, is a lion called Aslan, right? He assumes this very grand, regal, and powerful figure, uh, but a very just, uh, a very kind, but powerful figure sort of figure right and it's so clear that this is like a uh, symbolic of god right it's he's such a great figure it's it's just so powerful when you read about aslan right and i think that's part of what's made the series so iconic um and there's a part in the book where uh this boy is running away because he used to be a slave right and he finds out that his master's gonna sell him and so he runs away together with his horse and while he's running away uh, he meets this girl and, and, and another horse, and the four of them are running away together. Uh, and as they're on their way, <clears throat> they start getting chased by these lions. Right In the middle of the night, they're running, and they're, they're trying to escape uh, from their, their slaver too, right? But uh, they start running more fervently because these lions are chasing after them. Uh, and uh, know, at first, he doesn't know that this is aslan right this is like the god figure of the story right he just thinks it's just, it's just you know feral lions chasing after them uh and at one point this lion attacks them right it attacks the girl and he he scratches the backs of the girl he doesn't really like he could easily destroy her 
But he doesn't do that. And he instead, he scratches her back quite a few times. You know, and the boy goes to save uh, her and stuff like that. But later afterwards, when they're speaking, he talks to uh, Azan, you know, runs into the boy and he explains to the boy that that was him. And so he kind of wonders like, oh, Azan, why did you attack you know, my friend, why did you attack her? You know, why did she need to go through that? Um, and he said, well, um, what would you have done? Because uh, at when this happened to him, right, when he was attacked, uh, when, when his friend was attacked by the lion, he turned around, right? He is on this horse and this horse is a very like regal uh, horse and he's very noble. But the horse is so terrified of the lion that he just keeps running away. But this young little boy, he jumps off his horse and he runs back to in order to save his friend, even though he's up against a lion, right? And in it, he finds like, courage and bravery. And this is something that, you know, pushes him in the future too, right? As he keeps going, um, he, he has like a different mission that he needs to take on. And it was only because of this encounter with this lion that he finds the urgency and he finds the bravery. And he finds like the need to go, you know, do what he needs to do. And he said, um, like, without you having experienced that, you wouldn't have gone to do that. But he asked, like, oh, why did you actually have to scratch my friend, though? And he said, you know, that's her story. I talk to each person about their own story. But, you know, the stories of other people are not for you to know. Uh, and that was so moving because it comes up again in, in the future. And it's something that I think is really important for each of us too. Right? For each of us, God talks to us about ourselves. Right? Everything that we go through is about us. Right? So it's really not about other people. And when you try to uh, gauge someone else, you know, based on what you think and what you know of them, oftentimes it, you find out that you really don't know too much about that person. Right. And so that's why, you know, I was also listening to the book of Proverbs this week. And there's so much about, you know, how, how the things that come out of you, right, are so dangerous. Right. And how like a fool is a person who talks a lot and who, you know, assumes they know a lot about someone else uh, who assumes they know they're wise and they have so much that they, uh, you know, can show other people and stuff like that. Um, when when you actually look at them, it, it feels like they don't actually don't know that much. Uh, and so I think this is an important lesson. Um, and I hope that this is something that we can think about all throughout this uh, upcoming week too. Uh, it's something that I'll think about um, and I'll reflect back and I'll meet about with you guys about this in this coming week's episode of 2G Talks. Uh, so I can't wait to see you all again on this segment. Uh, and like I said at the very beginning of the segment, uh, please feel free to reach out um, You know, you know, in the comments below. Feel free to let me know what you think. Uh, but also, if you would like to connect, uh, then feel free to do so on any of the given platforms that we have. Uh, but I thank you guys, and I'll see you guys on next week's episode of 2G Talks. And thank you so much, Eddie, uh, over there in San Francisco for another wonderful episode of 2G Talks. If you got any uh, comments or anything you want to talk to him about, go ahead, leave a comment in the uh, in the comment section below. He would love to hear what you thought about his uh, segment too, all right? So there it is, guys. That is the end of the Monday podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed it more than anything else. Everyone, have an amazing and awesome day, and we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. <laughs> The morning star drive on 17.8. You saw me up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly, so let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this.